Uh, all right. So in the second part, I want to talk about sentiment analysis of this great uh, data set, Stanford Tree Bank. Uh, using BioLSTM and I implemented in PyTorch the codes that are available on deep learning projects. And uh, so the pipeline is that first you do data cleaning, some uh, some cleaning, and you know what are the inputs and outputs and the whole thing. Then you do pre-processing. So if, for example, padding, if a sentence is short, uh, and the fixed length is 18, as I said in the previous lecture. You can, you can put it anything. You can fill it with some pads. So these are pads in order to cover 18 tokens. And then we do indexing as well. So you have a text, you see, you, you find the unique words, you find the vocabulary, and then you build the vocabulary. For example, you give it the glove Glove, which is about one gigabyte, and then it gives you the vectors. It's word to vec. So if for each vec for each word or token, you receive a vector, and then you define your model, and then you train the model, and finally you predict and evaluate the model. So Torch Text, this is the library that I love because it helps you to work with JSON, TSV, and CSV files in order to create these pre-processing. And what are these pre-processing types? They are like this. It's like file loading, tokenization. You break the sentence into list of words. Uh, but those words are unique. You assign integers to them. And then you generate the vocabulary list. For example, you give a glove in order to see uh, what is the word, word vector like this. And you numeric, uh, so you give integers, as I said. You make sure that all words are unique. And you, you assign, I mean, you assign a unique integer to each word. And then the final, it is batching, padding, padding, I mean, packing and those stuff. But make sure that it doesn't split your, it doesn't split your training data. So you should do it yourself. There are other libraries in PyTorch for that. And it, it, it is not embedding lookup. So so you map each sentence to fixed dimension word vector. It doesn't, the torch text doesn't do that. So let's go and see the steps. The, the first step is specify how pre-processing should be done. This is fields. For example, we know our data set, the first column is text and the second column is label. And then the second step is use data set to load the data, tabular data set. It can accept JSON, uh, comma separated, uh, and TSV. Uh, I mean, it could be, it, uh, TSV doesn't have comma for separation. And it's just empty space. And then you give it here and you specify fields here and that's it. You you get your training data and test that it understand. I mean, using data, data which is for torch text, data it the tabular data sets uh, helps you to create training data and test. And finally, the reason behind this is number three. You construct an iterator to do batching, because you loop over the uh, training data you're in each episode and then you know batching and padding as i said if a sentence is is, is short it, it covers with some padding and then uh, so it's the workup bucket iterator so bucket iterator uh, can create these iterators so these are iterators for training data for for validation data and test data but sometimes you just use training data or test data. But it's a good practice to use validation data as well. Because we don't want to uh, 
do overfitting and all things. So at this stage of learning, you want to avoid that, and this is a good practice. So you could either use simple one heart embedding, or you could use nice glove embedding by uh, Professor Ma- uh, Christopher Manning, invented in Stanford. Very beautiful war to work idea. So this is the bucket iterator. It is splits, and then you're you're now ready to do. For example, we have the batch in the iterator, and batch you can use the text of that. You can use batch that labels the labels because uh, uh, our our data set is just text and just. Uh, labels so the tabular structure and uh, finally you should know that what is embedding because before giving it so embedding is like is like a linear a linear map why it is linear map because if you give one hot vector if you multiply to embedding ways what is the output of this linear map is just your embedding vector of any token, such as the word monster. And there is a necessity for padding. As I said, you need to cover uh, sentences. Uh, you cover with, with zero, for example, uh, these pads. And so it internally pack sequence is a tuple of two lists. So when we say pack sequence, it understands that uh, your batch size and take care of data. So this is the, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with packing. If you are not familiar with packing, you should know that it's not standard batching. In the, the first sentence, for example, the batch size is very small because only, for example, one of them is, is that short. That sentence is too short. Then the sentence becomes sentences inside a batch. Uh, for example, there are two sentences uh, in the second batch. In the third batch, we have two sentences. In the next batch, we have just three sentences. And in the, f- in the final batch, we have six sentences here. Uh, so we use different uh, sizes, so it's dynamic. So some of the sentences in this batch, batch one, some of the sentences in this batch, batch two, but batch one is small, batch two is larger, batch three is larger, batch four is larger, batch six uh, is very large, it has uh, uh, lots of um, sentences. So uh, the batch size, I mean, shows that, um, I mean, it's not the number, I was, it was my mistake. I, w- I was saying that when a sentence is short, it covers with pads. For example, the next couple of sentences, it covers with less pads. The next, so it try, it, it, uh, so we don't need to do it manually because these libraries can do it and we can save time. So we use packed sequences. And the model list is like, you know, in Python, we use lists, some list, for example, A, and the appended and those things. Here for modules, it's, it's a list of modules, let's say. So it's uh, in, in, in PyTorch, you use module list. For example, here we have 10 different uh, neural networks. It's a list of neural networks. And uh, the, this is the class, you're using pack sequence for BioLSTM. And if we, this is a class, it is inherited from neural network module. It, in, in its method, we just list whatever we have. And uh, in the forward, or what is the output of this mod by Elastium module, we have hidden states, cell states. Of course, we both of them are, we call it hidden, uh, we call it states. And then uh, what you need to know is that 
we have sequenced the data and sequenced that uh, uh, here uh, we we have uh, we, we are returning x and this hx of course we use you don't need these shared dropouts and those things but uh, the important thing is that if you are using bidirectional use this piece of code because now uh, your we have forward and you have these are backward for example they are connected to each other the hidden states and let's say this is the cell state and um, the layer forward is uh, you, you give these as input and the outputs are the concatenations of uh, outputs. And uh, the sentiment analysis, we use uh, this LSTM by LSTM. Just a quick recap. Uh, we have input gate, forget gate, output gate, cell state, and hidden state. Uh, you know, cell state is just for long-term uh, long uh, information. But hidden state is just very locally. For example, if you have a sentence and this is locally is important. But if you know the long term relationship, you know, use cell state. So both of these inputs and outputs are good informations that you can use. So these are the uh, tutorial help for, for PyTorch. And it has some parameters, input size, hidden size, number of layers. We usually use two layers. And uh, the drop, you could use dropout. You could you could make it by LSTM, but just using, uh, if it is true that you're using by LSTM. And just repeating, input gate in LSTM is like this. It's uh, decides what new information will be stored in the long-term memory. Forget gate is obvious, decides which information from long-term memory should be kept or discarded. And finally, the output gate, which is the important thing because you receive the cell state, uh, here the output state, which is uh, like this, is constructed from O1 and O2, output one and output two. And this is the bio-LSTM. Bio so it inheritance from just the neural network, but in init method, uh, we have init method, we have something else, call method, because after you have instantiated, call is activated. And uh, you give the vocabulary size, embedding dimension, hidden dimension. Of course, we are big, it's, it's, it's just, it's not pure LSTM. We are adding some fully connected. And here we use dropout. Finally, use softmax in order to normalize it. It's good for classification. And in the forward, forward method, you use what is in LSTM, what is the, what is the output of that. And then uh, your output are predictions. Predictions are fully connected to use dropout uh, and re relu activation. You you uh, you you use uh, LSTM of packed. Uh, this is the what what I what I what I needed. Packed padded sequence. So if you just use this method, what you receive you already you know the packed embedding. And then you use, you give packed embedding to the LSTM. So it has taken consideration of uh, those paddings, packing, and those things with just one sentence. So with this sentence, we unpad it, let's say. A and then uh, that's it. So the, the library. Uh, I mean, the codes are available. 